There's a special kind of pride That you feel deep down inside A strength that seems to thrive In Lima, Allen County The American way of life To get in gear and do what's right An unbreakable forthright link Called Real American Strength Lima, Allen County Real American Strength Keeping you up to date with what's happening in your community. Community Focus on GTV2. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and I'm pleased to welcome to the studio one of the busiest people in Lima right now. <laughs> this is Jill Ackerman. She is superintendent of the Lima City Schools. And we're getting ready to open the doors in just a few weeks. And we, we are. I know. Football's already started. Football is started. Officially, practice season has begun. We have a lot of kids on our football team this year. Um, Coach Fell has really brought quite a buzz into the community and the kids are excited as well. And we have a couple of big events that I wanted to mention today for everybody to mark their calendars for. We're going to participate in something new this year. It's called a Crosstown Showdown and it's sponsored by Skyline Chili. It, it, it will be held in Cincinnati. It's an entire week-long event at the end of August, but in particular for Lima Senior High, we will be playing there at the brand new Sheikley Complex, the new athletic complex there on the campus of the University of Cincinnati on August 30th. We're going to play Kentucky Beachwood, which I think is a really good, they're a really good team out of Kentucky. And we're scheduled to play them on Friday, August 30th, and the game is at 8.30 p.m. Now there are games all week long and there are games that take place even earlier, so a $10 ticket We'll get you into any game, so if you went early and you wanted to watch both games and then catch the Lima Senior High game, you could do that as well. But, but the one thing that we had talked about, we have a lot of fans that may not like to drive or be there that late at night, so the athletic department has been working on putting together charter bus rides. So for $20, you could purchase your $10 ticket for the game and um, a, a bus ride on oh, a nice charter great bus. Deal with Buckeye Charter, and so we're excited about that, and I wanted to leave that phone number for anybody that's interested. They can call the athletic department, and that number is 419-996-3050 to inquire about, um, about that, because there's a limited number of seats. Well, yeah, do it now, because I'm sure it's going to go quickly. Right. So that is one big thing that we're excited about, brand new for us to do, and then at our very first home game against Mansfield Senior on Friday, September the 6th, we are going to be honoring Coach Leonard Rush. He's returning, and the the state championship team from 1996, as many of, of those guys as can be there as well, we're going to honor them too. So we're excited about that, and we hope to have a big turnout from our community as well so that we can remember the glory days of when we won that state championship and kind of kick our season off and be really excited about it as well. well. Sure, because I'm sure a lot of those kids in 1996 are now growing up with their own kids and they can bring them exactly. back. Exactly, and you know anytime you ever run into anybody that was on that team, that's what they talk about was that championship game in 1996. So well, the whole town still talks about it. Right, so that's exciting and so we're happy to kick off football season mm -hmm. in the midst of everything else that's happening in August. Well in fact your band is getting ready for the big band show at the fair too. The band has been preparing. We've had band camp and lots of practices and then they're going to be playing at the fair show as well. Um, that's the first Friday night of the fair so we're excited about having them do that and then we really do want to encourage everyone um, who's a Spartan at heart, whether you're a Spartan graduate or just a Spartan at heart, to walk with us in the Labor Day Parade. We've done that for many years and last year we were we probably had 300 people. It was so exciting. So we just put out there on Facebook, wear your Spartan gear, and we'll get you the, <laughs> we'll put out the, um, the spot number and everything and the details of lining up. But it's really a fun and exciting thing to do, and it's also a great way to kick off the school year as well. And it's really moving to watch that crowd coming down the street, too. It is, and it's, it's just really inspiring for the community. I mean, just to be, we, we want to really just continue to show that we believe in Lima. And we're part of this community, and we're here to serve the community, too. So parents and students and grandparents and neighbors and babies and dogs everybody. and bring the game. Exactly. When is the first day of school? The first day of school is Tuesday, August the 20th. 
Um, the times of the buildings, none of that has changed. Parents should be getting their letters from the bus department here within the next week or so. I'd say by the second week in August, they should have those. We want to remind people that campus wear changes or any solid color polo. We're not restricted in color on the top. Same pants. Um, and then the we will not be charging for lunches this year because of that community eligibility option. For anybody? For anybody. Great deal. No high school fees as well. And then the high school, it, we had at one point gone to clear backpacks during the times of the bomb threats. And so that's passed, and the kids did really well with it, but we are going to allow them to carry regular backpacks Wonderful. now. Wonderful. The clear ones weren't holding up so well. So that Mr. Kent did send a letter to all the families, but I just wanted to remind them of that. All our school supply lists are on our website, which is www.limacityschools.org. People can like us on Facebook page, our Facebook page for updates and things as well. So in these last few days, what should parents be doing to get the kids ready? Well, really we suggest, and what I even try to do is get a routine established at home, a bedtime, bedtime. I mean, they're used to staying up and sleeping until whenever. Get them <laughs> into a routine of bedtime. Hopefully we've been reading all summer and doing things like that, but kind of just encouraging that as well. So, you know, it's going to be, it's always that transition's a little bit difficult. And our incoming kindergarten kids, they'll be on half days up until um, after Labor Day, but especially for them as well, just, just helping them to learn to kind of settle early and get to sleep at a good time, and then really trying to wake them early to <laughs> help them understand that this will be the routine soon. For the rest of their lives. Right. <laughs> exactly. Jill, if people do want more information, you have a complete website. And the address again is? www.limacityschools.org. Okay. They can call our board office, 419-996-3400, and like us on Facebook as well. Wonderful. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Jill Ackerman from the Lima City Schools. When we come back, we'll get a Head Start update right after this on GTV2. A message from the Allen County Chiefs Association. With the recent rise in juvenile crime, all Allen County police agencies are stepping up our efforts to reduce this with the enforcement of curfew laws. This affects anyone under the age of 18. Local laws may vary in age and time requirements among the villages, townships, and cities in the county. So please help us in our efforts by becoming familiar with the curfew law. Please check the websites on your screen for specific curfew information. Together we can make Lyme Allen County a safer place in which to live and work. Let's all do our part to keep the Ottawa River clean and healthy. Apply fertilizer and other lawn chemicals according to their label so excess chemicals aren't washed into the river. Your actions matter. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Lima Safety City today. Hello, I'm Chuck Eichelberger from the Lima Noon Optimist Club. Safety City is a very important part of the Lima community. The Optimist Club is renovating Safety City and it needs your help. Donations can be made by going to the website limasafetycity.org. You can also send a donation to Lima Noon Optimist Club, P.O. Box 428, Lima, Ohio 45802. Help keep the youth of Lima safe by donating to Safety City today. Thanks for joining us today on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker. If you have a little one, you may be interested in Head Start or Early Head Start. Joining us in the studio today from the Lima Allen Council on Community Affairs are Mary Collins and Stephanie Neal. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having us. us. You're welcome. You're currently taking registration for both Head Start and Early Head Start. Who's eligible? Um, any child that is birth to five. Okay. Um, we are currently taking applications um, for those classrooms. Um, we have Early Head Start Home Base, uh, where a teacher will come into the classroom or into the home um, and work with the child and the parent one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, they come in one day a week for an hour and a half each week. That's quite a service. Mm -hmm. And yeah. is anybody eligible for that portion of it? Yes. Um, and then we have classrooms, um, which operate from 9 to 3 um, for the Early Head Start classroom. And then we have Head Start classrooms as well. Okay, and there are in income guidelines for this as well? Yes, they need to meet 100% um, of the poverty guidelines. Um, then we also serve um, over income children as well um, if they have an IEP or an IFSB if they are um, disability. Okay, what does Head Start provide for the kids? Um, Mary? We are very a comprehensive program uh, that we serve um, 
in a child that's for education, for getting ready for school readiness goals, and then we also serve as a comprehensive with social service involved, nutrition, and the education piece of it. So those are the main criteria that we are really going to strive for. So what's the average day like for the kids? Well, the, for the early head start uh, we, with the birth, it's just nurturing and trying to get them prepared to enter into the Head Start program in which we have school readiness goals for early Head Start and Head Start which we're matching those together and so that uh, the, the day is like that we start off it's more of a um, classroom of a free play like but they're learning through play and those are the things that we are striving to explain to the parents that uh, when you sit down with the child singing songs uh, have circle times and different things like that for Head Start, and we constantly uh, strive for the school readiness piece of the Head Start program. It sounds like it's a fun day for fun the kids. Day. Yes, we have a fun day for, for them. And you have good results with it? Yes, we have. And so far with uh, the good results, we are actually with the Lima City Schools with the kindergarten camp that we actually are taking children that are going into kindergarten. And I think this is the last week for that this week uh, that we are in cooperation with them, doing a collaborative program that uh, we take so many of our children that are going to head uh, to kindergarten and they have a, about a two months already of uh, our teachers in the school city schools teachers are working together with our children and their children for kindergarten. And do you find that when they get into the classroom then they're better prepared? Yes, mm -hmm. yes they are. Wonderful. Um, how many slots do you have open for Head Start and Early Head Start? We serve 410 Head Start children. That's a bunch. And 108 Early Head Start children. Okay. And these are all, what, certified teachers that you have helping you out? Yes, we all are certified. Uh, the main goal is we have more, we have everyone with the AA degree. They cannot step into Head Start without the AA degree in early childhood development. But as of now, our goal is to make sure everybody has a bachelor's degree in early childhood. Those are some of the mandates have come down through the federal government by September 2013, which is this year, that 50% in the United States of all teachers have to have a bachelor's degree uh, for a Head Start. So those are some of the new criteria. Yes, we are all certified mm -hmm. and have a pre-K certification through the state of Ohio. 500 kids is a lot to manage. Do you need volunteers to help the teachers out? Oh, yes, we do. Um, and our volunteer program starts off with um, you have to come in as volunteers, but there's a criteria that uh, we have to have a background check, physicals, and all of that to, before you could qualify to be a volunteer and Janet Buchanan is the one that oversees the volunteer program and you can give her a call at LACA at 419-227-0158 extension 116 okay. and that would uh, she could give you more detail of the qualification that you would need to have to volunteer. Okay but I imagine a big part of it is you know loving kids and that, wanting that to help out. That is the great part of it. Definitely and it's really important for parents to feel comfortable to come into the classroom at any time Parent involvement is extremely important because they are the child's number one teacher. So they need to understand that if they're not involved with their child's education, then we don't have that um, camaraderie with the teachers and the parents. So they need to feel comfortable coming into that classroom at any time. And then to take the lessons they've learned home and practice them there as well? Most definitely. Yes. Okay. And the, uh, the parent volunteers are a little different from the community volunteers. Parents are uh, encouraged to come to volunteer with their children. And um, there is an open door policy uh, that if, but if they're there more than four times a month, that's when they have to go through the other changes of getting the physical and background check. But parents are very well and voluntary to come whenever they uh, want to. It's open door policy. Well, it is a wonderful program. Yes. And when do the classes actually start? They start September 16th. Um, we have an orientation on September 12th, but September 16th is the first day of classroom. So parents really need to be signing up now if they want their kids to participate. Yes, um, and our slots are filling up fast, so if they want to come in and get an application, um, they can pick that up at LACA, or if they need somebody to um, come out to the home and sit down and fill out an application, we can do that as well. Okay, what is your address? 540 South Central. Okay. 
um, at the corner of Kibbe and Central. Okay, and the phone number if people want more information? 419-227-9953. Okay, we appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Mary Collins and Stephanie Neal from LACA. I'm Ann Decker, and this is Community Focus on GTV2. Reduce, recycle, reuse. Allied Waste Services in the City of Lima encourage you to live green by recycling all that you can. Recycling promotes green living by reducing the amount of waste materials buried in landfills. This saves money, natural resources, and energy. Keep our environment healthy and start recycling today. Allied Waste Services is committed to a clean environment. Contact us today for your recycling needs. Visit our website, republicservicesohio.com, to learn more about recycling today. Lima City Council has recently amended the city's vicious dog warnings to deal with potential problems concerning dangerous dogs in the public. The ordinance is comprehensive. However, here are some key elements that all dog owners and their neighbors should be aware of. Any dog that is considered a breed of pit bull is considered a vicious dog regardless of its temperament. A vicious dog is any dog that attacks, bites, or causes injury to a person or domestic animal with or without provocation. Not under control of the owner, and secure with a muzzle and a leash of six feet or less in length. All vicious dogs must be confined when outside in a pen with a secured top and bottom or with the sides of the pen embedded at least one foot deep into the ground. If you're a dog owner and have concerns about any dogs in your neighborhood, visit LimaPoliceDepartment.com to find out more about the city's vicious dog ordinance. The fine for non-compliance is $150 per citation and ignorance of the law is not a defense. If there's an emergency situation, call local law enforcement for immediate assistance. We're back on Community Focus. I'm Ann Decker, and I'm pleased to welcome to the studio David Grimm. He is the new manager of the Allen County Fair. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much for the invitation. I guess it's not really the new manager. You've been <laughs> there for a few months, but it's your first Allen County Fair. Yeah, I've been there about nine months, and I think even though I've been in the business for 25 years, there's always some uh, anticipation, some excitement when it's your first fair here. Yeah, you getting ready for it? We are. We've been actually, you know, people ask us all the time, you must be getting ready for the fair now a couple weeks in advance. Well, actually, we've been getting ready for about 10 month, months altogether. No kidding. So. Uh, are you planning anything different for us this year, or are we going to see pretty much the same fair we've seen? Well, I don't think there's a lot of dramatic changes, but there are a number of entertainment changes that I think people will notice. Obviously, in the grandstand, we have two new stars and two new shows there for, for the kids. We have Awesome Hone and Bridget Mendler on Saturday night at the fair, and the kids' shows have done very well the last couple of years. And it's exciting because they're getting uh, two, two acts for the sort of the price of one. And then on the Saturday night, it'll be uh, Josh Turner and an opening act called Thompson Square, who had the number one song about a month and a half ago in country music. So that will be exciting. Uh, then on free entertainment, we've got some really great shows coming in. We have a tiger show coming in called Tiger Talks, Eight Beautiful Bengal Tigers. And you can get it fairly up close and personal. Just you, not too close. They'll be in the cage, and you know we'll be on the bleachers watching the show. And that will be down in Roshman Park uh, with three shows daily. And then a group of people that uh, perform in Ringling Brothers circuses and circuses all over the world, in fact, the Flying Pages. This is a trapeze show with seven members of the same family, the Page family. They're out of Sarasota, Florida, that are making their way here to Lima, Ohio, for their show. And it will be a huge trapeze uh, a show set up just south of the Fine Arts Ag Building uh, in a new location there. And uh, there'll be three shows a day also. So some, some neat entertainment coming in. What else do you have in the grandstand coming up? Well, the grandstand will be a lot of the traditional uh, events that have taken place, including the, the cheerleading com uh, contest and also the marching band contest. The uh, truck tug will be back. That's very popular. The, you know, every red-blooded American <laughs> male wants to get out there and see who's got the most powerful truck and if he can pull the bumper and the rear end out of his neighbor's truck. Um, the uh, antique tractor pull will be back, uh, and then the big tractor pull uh, will be the last night of the fair. Uh, so motorsports is very popular, uh, but I think what really makes the Allen County Fair uh, stand above the rest in western Ohio is the wide variety of activity that takes place at the fair. Such as? Well, I think we have a really good balance. Uh, the number one thing is a big midway. There'll be about 35 rides that will come to the fair. and. Uh, and carnivals the last couple of years have had a difficult time in this country, especially with the small fairs, because there just hasn't been the business there. And operating a carnival nowadays is very expensive with uh, the fuel at $4 a gallon for diesel fuel. Insurance is very big in the carnival business. And then investment of new rides 
is big as well. And of course, today's public wants the biggest and the most spectacular rides there's available. And poor Jax, who's been with the fair for about 30 years here uh, with the Allen County Fair, is in a great show. And do you have like ride specials, wristbands? How does that work? We do. We, we've got a multitude of, of specials, and uh, there are so many I can't quite give you all the numbers here as we um, do this taping, but uh, they can go online uh, at allencofair.com and, and come up with those. But there are specials to ride, whether it's afternoon or evening. You can buy uh, tickets in advance at about six locations, uh, and I don't have them all at handy, handy but uh, Union Bank has those tickets right now, as well as a Superior Federal Credit Union. Also, QP Restaurants uh, has them. Uh, the fair office uh, does as well, and there's a couple of other locations. Just check online. Okay. Um, really, the heart of any fair, especially the Allen County Fair, is the Junior Fair, and you have quite a few exhibitors. I heard the other day we have about 7,000 exhibits all together in the Junior Fair. That's it's one incredible. Of the, one of the biggest Junior Fairs in Ohio, and this is a, a very powerful and strong 4-H county, as everybody is aware of. So that's really the, the heart and soul of the fair. And I know I can remember when my brother and I went to our fair in northern Ohio uh, at Oak Harbor. We took our lambs to the fair, and that was a big deal to work on those animals and get them ready and show them. And then, of course, it came sale day, and then the tears started running down kids' faces as we had to part with our animals, and that's always a sort of a trying time. But it is uh, the anchor of the fair, and I think that's really the anchor of all fairs uh, clear across the country. You know, when you think 4-H, you think the kid with the lamb or the cow, but 4-H is so much more than that. You have building after building full of things the kids have done. It is. I, I think uh, most people really think livestock when they think of 4-H, uh, but there are many different exhibits that 4-Hers do, uh, so livestock is just one portion of that. But we do have the 4-H exhibit building over in our 4 North building complex. Uh, they'll be also, the 4-Hers will also be doing a, a program at 4 o'clock every day, sort of an educational show and tell, and that is planned right now for the Youth, Act, uh, excuse, yes, the youth Activities Building. Uh, and uh, so there's really a lot of different exhibits. It's not just the traditional exhibits like it was 30 and 40 years ago. So the dates for this year's Allen County Fair are? August 16th to the 24th. And hours are? Uh, well, we'll open at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, when we'll start taking tickets, and we'll go to right about midnight. Not much happens in the morning, though, really? No, really. It's, uh, really, you've got a lot of 4-H uh, exhibits, especially livestock, is when they start showing early in the morning. Uh, but uh, the rides will either start at either 1 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the day. Certainly earlier if it's a, a weekend and later if it's a weekday. Uh, so just check our schedule online. Okay, it does vary day to day depending on it weekday, does. weekend, whatever it is. Mm -hmm, that's correct. How much is admission this year? Admission is the same as it was last year. It's seven uh, seven dollars, and uh, you know uh, that's uh, eight and above, and under that is free. So okay. it's a really good deal. Excellent. Uh, fairs fairs are probably the best entertainment package uh, clear across the country. Uh, you can go to the fair and go on all the rides and buy uh, wristbands and buy admission and buy food for a family of four, and uh, it's, I think it's very reasonable entertainment. Oh, especially if you're looking at, you know, comparable prices for the local amusement parks. Well, where you might spend 350 or $400 <laughs> there for a day. And that's just for one drink. <laughs> yeah. You can come to, to the Allen County Fair and, and do it all for probably $75, so it's a real deal. How do people get tickets? Or if they want one of these books, with, which has literally everything listed well, in it. Well, the books are all over. This is the fair magazine, always a very popular uh, piece of uh, information and advertising for the fair. They're, they're being distributed all over Allen County uh, as we uh, speak. And uh, just go into a number of stores. And if you can't find one, we have them at the fair office. Uh, but I know that Cupies uh, has them, uh, Union Bank has them, Superior Federal Credit Union, uh, uh, Citizens Bank, just a number of different organizations have them. So just pick them up and that, really almost everything you want to know about the fair <laughs> is in this magazine. Literally. And if you, if you can't find it, just give us a call at the fairgrounds at 228-7141 and we'll let you know where those magazines are at. Okay. Uh, we talked at the beginning that this is your first Allen County Fair and I was kind of wondering what plans you have for future fairs. Well, I, I, we've been so busy this year just dealing with details that uh, really uh, don't, uh, not sure where that's going to be gone. But uh, I really, I, I think in a couple of areas that we really need to take a look at will be overall general programming. All fairs need to upgrade and improve their programming 
and be as current as we can with today's uh, trends and thinking out there, as well as re retaining a number of the historical aspects of the fair, which have always been popular. So having that special balance, I think, is important. And then the other thing is fixing up the facility. Uh, in my quick analysis is we've got well over a million dollars of deferred maintenance that needs to be put into the fairgrounds, no kidding. whether it be paint, lights, uh, paving, um, signage, um, fencing. Uh, the grandstand is in serious need of uh, repair with the uh, paint. Uh, structurally, it's in great shape, but we'd like to finish the seats up at the top. We're not sure about the roof and the condition of that. We brought some experts in to do a preliminary look at it. But that's probably going to take two hundred and fifty to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars of work there. So this is a multi-million dollar plant on one hundred and thirty-two acres here. It's a it's a real gem for Allen County, and we need to make sure that we take good care of the plant for a future business. Okay, David, give us your phone number one more time if people want more information. Four one nine two two eight seventy one forty one. And the website. Uh, www.allencofair.com. All right, we appreciate you coming in and we'll see you at the fair. Thank you. You're welcome. David Grimm from the Allen County Fair.